Again, we're talking about the policy rules under 407 and 411. If you listen to some of the other videos, you know, I think these rules are um, very narrow, very specific, don't come up uh, as often as other rules we'll cover in the course, but represent something very particular, and that is understanding the foundational requirements of a rule, understanding as the opponent how the elements of a rule, the foundational requirements of an objection, actually belong to the opponent. So if there are four elements, four foundational requirements, is the opponent that says objection, 407, subsequent remedial measures, objection, I can meet these foundational requirements. Listen to me, judge, over at sidebar, say, here's why the foundational requirements, the elements under this objection are met. One, two, three, four. Right? That's what we're talking about. And remember, especially as it's uh, demonstrated through these policy rules, among those elements that belong to the opponent, almost always one of which is the ill purposes, the bad purposes for which we think the proponent is trying to introduce this evidence. So let's look at a few more. Um, we talked about offers to pay medical expenses before, and that was a good demonstration of there's some foundational requirements. This is essentially two of them. Some evidence of promising to pay medical expenses, admissible for that bad purpose of proving liability. Right? There's the two. So you know, as the opponent, if something like this is coming up at trial, um, you know the opponent's going to stand up, object, offer to pay medical expenses under 409, make their way over to sidebar, your honor. The two foundational requirements are met. This is evidence of a promise to pay, and they, the proponent, the one trying to put on this evidence, is trying to put it on for the bad purposes to prove liability. Conversely, the proponent, the one who is putting on the evidence, the one who is questioning a witness or putting on the documents, would say, Your Honor, the foundational requirements under this rule are not met. That is, the opponent can't meet these foundational requirements, and we know that the fight is most likely to be my purpose. I'm not trying to prove liability, I'm trying to prove some other acceptable purpose. Uh, so that's where the argument will come down between the opponent, the one who owns the objection and thus the foundational requirements under the rule, and the proponent, the one who stopped in their tracks and has to respond to this objection uh, that they didn't seek. Look at liability insurance under 411. We understand the policy behind liability insurance. We want people to have liability insurance, and we don't want them to second guess that decision by thinking, uh, should I get it? Will it be used against me in litigation uh, for some bad purpose? That is, I must be liable. I must have been in the wrong. Why else would I have liability insurance? But think about it. Before we even get to what this rule says, you know that liability insurance, this policy rule, this policy reason that sits somewhere between the opening hurdle of relevance and the last fail-safe hurdle of 403 unfair prejudice, we know that the specific policy rule having to do with liability insurance has some foundational elements, has some uh, requirements under this rule that are owned by, including the bad purpose, owned by the opponent. The opponent is the one that's going to say objection, liability insurance under references to liability insurance under 411. Objection. Um, they, I can meet the one, two, three requirements of this rule that include the bad purpose for which the proponent is trying to put it on. Conversely, you know the other side of the argument. You know the proponent is going to say these foundational requirements, these elements under this objection, 411, are not met. And the, the fight is most likely for the proponent saying, I am not offering it for this bad purpose. I'm not offering it to prove liability in this case. I'm offering it for some other acceptable purpose. 411 is a good example of it sets out evidence that a person was or was not insured against liability is not admissible to prove whether they were acting negligent, right? So it's element one, or fun foundational requirement one, evidence that the person was or was not insured against liability. Element two, to prove that they were acting negligently or otherwise wrongfully. That is the bad purpose. You can't introduce this stuff. You can't introduce evidence of liability insurance to prove that someone was negligent. So there's your foundational requirements owned by the opponent one and two to include the bad purposes of the proponent. This rule, 411, actually sets forth what are some good purposes. We know that the proponent, the one who stopped in their tracks from asking questions or introducing the document, um, can say the foundational requirements of this rule, 411, liability insurance, are not met. And we know that the fight is likely to be, I'm not trying to offer it 
for this bad purpose of the person acting negligently or otherwise wrongfully. I'm trying to offer it for some other purpose, some good purpose, and the rule actually provides that. They may admit it for another purpose, such as providing a witness's bias or prejudice or proving ownership or control. And if you think about these latter ones, ownership or control, let's just say an issue in the case. Let's just say something that was controverted at trial was whether the person owned the stairs uh, that caused the injury, whether the person owned um, the land by which someone was hurt, right? Um, then we have an issue at trial, a controverted issue at trial as to ownership. Well, I might be able to introduce evidence that the defendant in this case has liability insurance on those the property that has those stairs or on the property where someone was hurt. Not for the purpose. Think about it from the proponent's state of view. Uh, this is uh, evidence that a person was insured against liability, but I, Your Honor, as the proponent, am not offering it to, for the bad purpose. I'm not offering it to prove whether a person acted negligently. I'm offering it for the very good purpose, the explicitly good purpose in the rule, to prove ownership. And you can see how this becomes limited purpose evidence. This becomes evidence that's ripe for a Rule 105 limiting instruction. Your Honor, could you instruct the jury to just consider it for the good purpose and not the bad purpose? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you're about to hear evidence of liability insurance. Please consider that only as it bears on the issue of ownership of the stairs or ownership of the building or land that is at issue in this case, not as it bears on whether the person was negligent or not. You shall not consider it for whether they're negligent. People are not negligent just because they have liability insurance. You can actually see it come out in, a, in the court's limiting instruction under 105. So there's your foundational requirements. That includes the bad purpose to act negligently. Here's it's okay if it's for some good purpose, including the one. Think about subsequent remedial measures. You can break down the foundational requirements. I could put up the rule, but I could also put it up like it might appear in your outline. After an injury or harm, measures are taken that, if taken previously, would make it likely, less likely to occur. Offered to prove one of these bad purposes. And you can see with the product liability suits, it includes a lot of product defect, design defects, but it's essentially the same thing. To prove negligence, to prove wrongfully, to prove culpable conduct. So this rule, again, these foundational requirements belong to the opponent. The one objecting, the one who sits in court while the other side presents and says, ha, they are about to put on subsequent remedial measures. They are about to put on evidence that actually meets the requirements of this rule. I must stop them. The burden is on me as the opponent. I stand up. Objection. Subsequent remedial measures under 407. Make our way to sidebar. Your Honor, I can meet the foundational requirements under this rule. I have one, two, three, and I have four, which is my argument that the proponent here is trying to put on this evidence for the bad purpose. They're trying to show that we fixed the broken stairs after the fact. They're trying to show that we changed a policy uh, after the alleged injury in the case. They are trying to put on this evidence for one of these bad purposes. You can see how the opponent embraces the foundational requirements of the rule and uses that to actually support their argument at sidebar. Conversely, the proponent, in response, is going to say these foundational requirements under this rule are not met, and we know where the likely fight is. Number four, I am not offering this uh, seeming injury or measures taken and um, and you know these steps taken to make it less likely to occur if they had taken it before. I'm not offering it for that bad purpose. I'm offering it for some 